Hello everyone. Today I'm going to share with you a question from the put name competition. We have to find the minimum of the absolute value of the sum of the six trigonometric function. So this question is very interesting. So let's see how we can start. Um, I can see that the question consists of six trigonometric function, which is um a bit of uh difficult to handle. So we will try to simplify the expression a bit. Notice that I can express tangent, secant, cosecant, and cotangent as the function of sine and cosine. So let's do that. So I will try to combine the two fractions here. And I will try to do the cross multiply for these two fractions. Notice that the sum of psi square x and cosine square x is 1. So now that's good. We have 2 psi x plus cosine x here. We will try to deal with this psi x multiplied by cosine x. Notice that um, the whole square of psi x plus cosine x, when I expand it, it becomes psi square x plus 2 psi x plus cosine square x. So these two, the sum of psi square x and cosine square x is 1. So now I can express the product of psi x and cosine x in terms of the sum of psi x and cosine x. So let's go back to the original expression. I can now sub in this expression into this uh, whole expression. Now let's let u equals psi x plus cosine x and simplify the expression more. I have used the identity of the sum of two squares, so I can cancel out the 1 plus u here. So the expression is greatly simplified, it becomes u plus 2 over u minus 1. So our step 2 is, we have to change the domain of our question. Originally, the expression has the domain for real values of x. But we simplify the expression to become this guy, where u is equal to the sum of psi x and cosine x. Um, we know that the minimum value of psi x and cosine x is not negative 2, because psi x and cosine x attain their minimum values at different values of x. So you know psi x attains its minimum at these angles, and cosine x attains its minimum at these angles. We need to combine them into a single trigonometric function to find their max and mean. So let's use the compound angle formula. So I have written the formula here, and I will put psi x under the first uh, term here, and then cosine x uh, in the second term here. So now we can compare their coefficient. Notice that the first term out cosine theta should be equal to 1, because the coefficient of psi x is 1. And then the, in the second term, out psi theta should also be equal to 1, because the coefficient of cosine x is also 1. So combine them, these two e equations, we can use division. So out psi theta over out cosine theta is equal to 1. We cancel out the out, so now we can get tangent theta is equal to 1. So theta, we choose the principal value pi over 4, and then now we substitute 
this angle into either one of the equation. So we put it back into the sine equation. And then we know that sine pi over 4 is equal to root 2 over 2. So now r will be equal to 2 over root 2, which is root 2. So now we can write u, which is originally the sum of sine and cosine x, to be root 2 sine bracket theta plus pi over 4. And we know that this uh, sine function, the number, uh, the coefficient before it represent its max and mean value. So now the u should be bounded between root 2 and negative root 2. So we go to our step 3, which is to find the minimum value directly. But we have to consider very carefully. We first look for any x-intercept. If there is any x-intercept uh, exists, the minimum value of this absolute value will be zero immediately. It is because, for example, let's draw a graph to represent. I have a function like this randomly. If it cross the x-axis at these two points, after I take the absolute value, the graph will reflect about the x-axis, right? So now the minimum value of this function will be zero. So now we have to find out if there is any x-intercept. So let's do the combining the fraction. And then the denominator will be multiplied by zero, which will vanish. So this leaves the numerator equals zero, which is a quadratic expression. We use the discriminant to check if there's uh, any real roots. So b squared minus 4ac, which is negative 7 and is less than 0. So there's no x-intercept for this function. So now we have to differentiate the function to check if there's any minimum or maximum value. So let's let the function of u equals to u plus u. 2 over u minus 1, which is equal to u plus 2 bracket u minus 1 to the negative 1 power. So let's do the differentiation. Uh, we do the f dash, which is equal to 1 minus 2 bracket u minus 1 to the power of negative 2. And we set it to 0. And then I try to make it become a fraction again. So I can add the 2 over u minus 1 whole square to the right hand side. And then u minus 1 whole square will be equal to 2. And then we can do the square root plus or minus root 2. And then u will be 1 plus or minus root 2. So there are two solutions for u. 1 plus root 2 or 1 minus root 2. And we will reject the first solution because it is already out of our range. Remember the u should be within root 2 and negative root 2. So we will consider this point as the stationary point. So let's do one more time of differentiation. So we'll do the second derivative again. We try to differentiate the first derivative one more time. So the one after differentiate will vanish, and then it's negative 2, and then the negative 2 will go down, becomes the constant u plus 1 inside and then the power will becomes negative 3 and then we use the chain rule to differentiate u minus 1 which is 1 
So the expression will become four u plus one to the power of negative three. So I make it become a fraction, and then we substitute our solution f double the u, which is a uh, one minus root two. We put it in the expression. Oh, sorry, minus one. So we keep, and then these two one will cancel, and we can see that negative root two to the power of cube. So it will be less than zero the whole expression. So we know that the u equals. 1 minus root 2 will give us the maximum point. So let's find out the maximum value at this point. I will substitute negative root 2 plus 1 into the function. So this 2, 1 can be cancelled. And 2 root 2 can be cancelled as root 2. So the maximum value will be negative 2 root 2 plus 1. So now the maximum points will be negative root 2 plus 1 and negative 2 root 2 plus 1. And we know that after taking the absolute value on fx, uh, fu, it will become a minimum point. So the minimum value will become like this, absolute negative 2 root 2 plus 1. And then, if we remove the absolute sign, we will add a negative sign. So it will become 2 root 2 minus 1. And notice that there is a vertical asymptote at u equals 1. So when u is a uh, value slightly greater than 1, say it's 1.1. Um, so we can check that 1.1 plus 2 over 1.1 1 .1 minus 1. The denominator 1.1 1 .1 minus 1 will become 0 0.1 and 2 over 0 0.1 will be 20. So it becomes a very large number. So I can say it becomes positively large. And we can also check that if u is slightly less than 1, say 0 0.9, we substitute into the expression and we know that this expression will become negative 20 so it will become negatively large so the curve near the asymptote will be both become positively large so now we have to check the final step the end points on the interval root 2 and minus root 2 so we will directly Substitute root 2 and negative root 2 into fu. And notice that we have to do some rationalization. I will first factorize these two negative sides out. So the denominator will become plus in the middle. And then now I will do the rationalization of the denominator. We multiply both root 2 minus 1 in the numerator and the denominator. So we, we can get 2 minus 3 root 2 as the end point value for negative root 2. Notice that this number is a negative number because 3 root 2 should be greater than 3 root 1 which is equal to 3 so 2 minus something greater than 3 will be a negative number so after taking the absolute sign we have to flip around the two terms so the absolute value of f bracket uh, negative root 2 will be absolute 2 minus 3 root 2 which is 3 root 2 
minus 2. So we will now calculate the endpoints at root 2. So now we'll do the rationalization of denominator directly. So now we compare these two numbers. Because 2 plus 3 root 2 is obviously a positive number. But these two values must be less than 2 plus 3 root 2. So how we can compare them without using calculator? So let's assume 2 root 2 minus 1 is greater than 3 root 2 minus 2. So we do the calculation like a normal inequality. I will first move 2 root 2 to the right hand side. So it's minus 2 root 2. And these two terms can be simplified as root 2 simply. And this negative 2 I can add to the left hand side. So we can get 1 greater than root 2, which is false. So now we can say that 2 root 2 minus 1 is less than 3 root 2 minus 2. So the final answer, the minimum value of this absolute of the sum of 6 trigonometric functions is 2 root 2 minus 1. So finally, I attach the graph of this function. And we can see that it's a periodic function and its minimum value is around 1.83 which is the value of 2 root 2 minus 1. And I hope you guys will like this video because it's a very long uh, analysis of the question. And I try to do as many steps as I can so as to, um, to fully analyze the graph and the function of this interesting sum of trigonometric function. And see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.